It's fall, which means football season is in full swing, and for many of us, there's no better way to enjoy the games than by having some skin in the game, which is why BetMGM remains the exclusive betting partner of The Athletic. And as a fan of The Athletic, you can bet $10 to win $150 plus a free three-month subscription or an extension to your subscription with The Athletic when you bet with BetMGM using our promo code. Just sign up at BetMGM.com and use the promo code THEATHLETICPOD at checkout to take advantage of the special offer from the King of Sportsbooks. That's bet $10 to win $150 plus three months free from The Athletic at BetMGM.com and using the promo code THEATHLETICPOD at checkout. It's a new customer offer. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. Colorado, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia only. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Nevada, and Virginia. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. In Tennessee, call or text the red line at 800-889-9789. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. Promotional offer not available in Nevada. What's up? Welcome in. We are back from the bye week. Hopefully everyone had a nice Bears this weekend. Maybe enjoyed some Bulls basketball. How about them, huh? Yeah. Start a Bulls podcast. Unfortunately, They're the excited. one game over the weekend I was able to watch the most of was the Warriors game. Which did not go. Through. Yeah, yeah. It, it started off well. They were winning by like ten in that game, and Steph Curry was Steph Curry. But I watched that game as well. Yes. No. It's uh. But then the sweep. The LA teams down at the Staples Center. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, even if LeBron wasn't playing, and there was no Bears football to get annoyed by or anything like that. <laughs> Come on, Justin Fields is playing, so there is still some excitement and playing quite well. Right. I, th- I think at least from his perspective, he left everybody with a good feeling from Monday night. Yeah, there were some good vibes going to the bye, despite yeah. the fact that this team's lost four in a row. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. It doesn't really feel like it. Even even Matt Nagy will smile every now and then if you bring up the quarterback. If you bring up everything else, no, no, very. No. Oh. He might as well just say no comment. Right. Talk about Justin Fields all day, baby. Well, we are back. Uh, welcome in. Follow us on Twitter at Adam Hogue at Adam Johns. Our producer is Kent Garrison. You could read John Z on the Athletic, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns is where you go to subscribe. You can check me out at NBC Sports Chicago.com as we get back in the groove this week. Um how'd you enjoy your buy? I took the kids to a water park. It snowed where I was. Oh. Like a good amount. Like shovel snow? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was like uh, two or three inches up in wait the uh, northwest Wisconsin, Minnesota oh, area. Yeah, way, way to spend your bye week there, shoveling snow there, Adam Hogue. Well, I didn't have to do it. It wasn't my house. <laughs> well, nice of you actually, to help. <laughs> actually, James did the entire back deck. He <laughs> loves the snow. Yeah. He just absolutely, so he, you know, enjoy it while you're young. That's what I have to say. Um yeah, no, some people went off to Florida and all these nice places, and that's fine. A couple of our colleagues did. Yeah. Good for them. I enjoyed some family time up north, which is cool. Uh, and I know you went to a water park. Hopefully not in the snow. No, no. Even grown men can use the benefits of going down a water slide every now and then. You know, we... <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I haven't been to a water park in years. Come on. It's for the 10 seconds you're on there, it's a fun experience. All the worries of the world are gone. You don't have to worry about the bears. All you have to worry about is the drops. <laughs> we drove by the water park you went to, and James was like, Daddy, I don't think it's a nice day to be going down a water slide. It's like, well, there's an indoor water park. It's an in- indoor water park. Yeah. But yes, I agree on the outside part. It did not seem very nice. Um, so hopefully you went through the indoor ones. And not that is true. Um all right. Well, there is some news to break down. Um, I should also mention, the, uh, first of all, thank you for all the positive feedback on having uh, Nate Tice and Robert Mays on the podcast last week. A lot of evergreen conversation, I feel like, in that podcast. So if you missed it, go back, check it out. It's on YouTube. Check out our YouTube channel. It's all there. Pretty much a must listen. We had them on for the entire podcast. They are the hosts of the football show on The Athletic and just a really in-depth conversation about the state of the Bears at the bye week. So if you happen to miss that, go back, check it out. We appreciate you doing that. Um, And we have sweatshirts that are now available to buy on obviousshirts.com. 
and you know we're moving into snow season as we're talking about so you can get those and um, make sure you check those out everything benefits the 22q family foundation throughout the month of november so uh, make sure you check that out all right there is some news. I think we were expecting this news, and Matt Nagy made it official yesterday at Alice Hall. But Tevin Jenkins, the second-round draft pick, the guy they had first-round grades on, guy a lot of fans wanted in the first round. Um, everybody was very excited about the Tevin Jenkins pick until he came down with a back injury, did not participate in training camp, ended up needing surgery in August, and uh, we had not really seen a whole lot from him or seen him at all uh, in, until basically that workout in Pittsburgh where he looked like he was doing a lot. And so sure enough, after the bye, he will practice opening up a 21-day practice window to be activated off of IR. That means that in the next 21 days, 20 days now, he can either be activated and brought back to play the rest of the season at any point in that time period or he reverts back to IR and is out for the season. This is where I want to say that he is not replacing Jason Peters this week against the Ravens. This will be a very different process than Larry Borum's return from a sprained ankle. This is uh, your second round pick, the one you traded up for, coming back from back surgery. I know it's been a few months. I know he's on track. But you don't want to rush this return. The Bears will not do that. It's even a possibility that he goes through these 21 days and gets the practices that the Bears want, and then he reverts back to IR. Very possible, but he's not playing this Sunday against the Ravens. Yeah, I think that that would be a very disappointing outcome, though, if he ends up That's not fair. Play, playing at all. I, and I don't think that that would do Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace, any favors. Um, But on the other hand, if he's not ready and he can't play, then... He's not, not ready to throw him out play. there. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's the bottom line. I, I I don't know. I feel like I it's hard to put too much stock in like a pregame workout, but we were there. We did get to see it in Pittsburgh. And now you can't there's a much there's a huge difference between just running around and going through like a physical workout on the field and actually having to use your strength to block offensive linemen when you've had a back surgery, but or a defensive lineman, I should say. I'm just very curious to see where this goes, and I think it's a big deal for a number of reasons. One, what I just mentioned, like this pick has not reflected very um, positively on the general manager, considering that it really was the back issues that made him fall to the second round, and the Bears traded up to get him. And there's also, you know, more to that story, more layers. Kevin White. This is not the first time it's happened type of deal. And then there's also where the hell you put him conversation. Like if he is ready. And make sure you are putting your franchise quarterback in the best position to succeed. Because as we've seen so far, when he gets protection, he looks pretty good. And when he doesn't, it looks pretty bad. So this will be an interesting storyline over the next few weeks. As far as his first practice went... He was at left tackle. I know there's a debate about moving him to right tackle. We'll get into that a little bit more later uh, with Ted Nguyen, um, who will be joining our podcast. Um, but, like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying not to think too much about it because the guy's returning for back surgery. This is going to take time, and there's no reason. Like, he's not replacing Jason Peters. Jason Peters has been – Admirable in his service for the Bears. That's what I'm going to describe it as because, as we all like to joke around here, you know, he was on a boat when the Bears called for his help. Um, he's actually played quite well, and Larry Borm's playing quite well at right tackle. We'll discuss this more later, but I don't know. Um, I get your, your your thought on the Bears wanting to see him because of what it means to Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, but at the same time, you know what they're going to say. We're going to do what's in the best interest of the player as well. Yeah. They don't want to ruin the kid. I just think because the optics that he's made it all the way to this point, there's still eight games back. I don't know how if you shut him down for the rest of the season, it doesn't look like another setback. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it just the optics of it, I don't think are good. Let's talk more about the where the hell you play him conversation, though. Um, because as you said, I mean, Jason Peters is playing well at left tackle. 
I think this is a situation where, well, here's what I would do, okay? I would just bring him along, continue to let him soak in everything he could possibly get from Jason Peters, observe. Um, practicing is a good thing. He has not practiced in pads in a really, really long time, going back to last year at Oklahoma State when he ended the season because of injuries. And I hate to say it, but you're kind of waiting for an injury. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm serious because, yeah, yeah. like, a couple possibilities that we could talk about, okay? One is, if you really want to get him on the field, but Peters is playing so well and he's healthy at left tackle, do you start Tevin Jenkins at guard? Like, try to, you know, start him on the inside with the goal of kicking him outside, whether that's left guard, right guard, I don't know. The problem with that, though, I don't foresee them kicking Cody Whitehair or James Daniels out of there. Um, I don't think either one of them is dominating, but I don't think either one of them is in any danger of losing their starting job either based on how they're playing. So I don't know that that's necessarily an option. Other option would actually be if you want to play him at left tackle, Jason Peters did play some guard last year for the Eagles. It did not go very well, though. But he did re-sign there in Philadelphia to play right guard. He ended up going back to left tackle because their left tackle got hurt. But then later in the year, he did play some right guard. It's not the craziest situation. You know, if you really want to play Jenkins, you could do that. But again, who are you taking out? And if the answer is, oh, because I know some of our listeners are saying this right now and screaming this in their car, get Sam Mustafer out of there, move either Cody Whitehair or James Daniels back to center. We've seen that. And do you really want to change centers on Justin Fields? No. I think the simplest solution, Adam, is if he's healthy, healthy enough to play. Just make him your swing tackle. Let him get those occasional reps that come in with the extra lineman. You can even put him in motion like Alex Bars if you want to get him really acclimated to doing different things. Left side, right side. Um, it's not an ideal entry into the NFL for him, but it's a simple solution because I don't think you're shifting your offensive line, which has shown that it works in the run game, has shown that it could handle certain pass rushers. You don't need widespread changes just to insert your second round pick. Eventually, you know, he's a player that's going to force your hand a bit because he is a second round pick. But at this point, with eight games remaining, you're right. It'll take an injury for to him for him to have a full-time start, starting spot. What if he shows you, though, in practice he's one of the best five? Like, he should be on the field. Well, then that's a different story. But <laughs> I'm still going to side with the, the patience and the no reason to rush him because I don't think that's going to be the case. This isn't a sprained ankle. It's back surgery. Like, they're going to give him days off. They should give him days off. But you got to be mindful with his long-term future here. I know the Bears, Brass is thinking about their, their current futures, but you know them. They'll still be protective of the kid. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out again, though. The injury, fa- it, it, it's also like you just look at football. Like, it's unlikely that the, the odds are against these five offensive linemen all playing every snap the rest of the season. It happens, but chances are somebody's going to get dinged up here along the way at some point. Um, And so all those options I just brought up, I guess, would be on the table, assuming Tevin Jenkins can play. Either you play him at guard somewhere or Jason Peters moves to guard. I don't know, but it's those are the types of conversations that maybe we're having here in the next few weeks, but certainly not this week. I think we know what the offensive line is going to be. I, I don't. I personally don't expect Tevin Jenkins to be activated by Sunday. I'd be stunned by that. Absolutely yeah. stunned. Um, and then you got three day turnaround to playing the Lions on Thanksgiving, so you're probably not messing with anything there. Now maybe after that Lions game, those Thursday games give you a little bit of a mini buy. So maybe after that is the time you you maybe evaluate what's going on with the O-line, what's working, what's not. These are all games we're evaluating. Justin Fields, where's the weakness? Is there a weakness on the O-line? Are they playing better? I thought they played pretty well against the Steelers as a whole. And uh, and then maybe that's when you make a change. If he's ready. 
Which is a big question mark. It's, mm, so. it's the main question. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we'll continue to monitor that, but that was the big news coming out of the bye week. The Bears are, as we record this Tuesday, the Bears are off today, back to work on Wednesday as they prepare for the Baltimore Ravens. A tough game, but an interesting game, and um, we'll have more of that on Thursday. But we are certainly far from done in this episode as we are bringing in Ted Nguyen, who you should be following on Twitter. He's a very good um, film guy. He knows his stuff, knows his football, evaluates these quarterbacks and all these players, guys like Tevin Jenkins, Justin Fields, the whole group uh, in the draft season. And then, uh, you know, writes about what he sees on the film during the season. He's had a couple good write-ups on the Bears, both bad against the uh, Buccaneers a few weeks ago and better. Uh, what Justin Fields did a week ago against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we bring him in now. You should be following him on Twitter. Great follow on Twitter. Great way to learn a lot of things about football and about your favorite team. And in this case, uh, as we talk about the Chicago Bears, he's been studying Justin Fields, been studying this Bears offense. You can follow him on Twitter at FB underscore film analysis. Ted, what's up, man? Thanks for jumping on with us today. No problem. Thanks for having me on. Ted, when you look at Justin Fields against the Steelers, as opposed to what you saw against the Buccaneers. I know you wrote extensively about that that awful game. What are you seeing from the Bears quarterback? Yeah, I think, you know, early on in the season, I think there was definitely some trouble transitioning into that offense. And um, just, you know, his process was just a little slow. I think some of that had to do with just learning how to get in the huddle, learning, you know, new pre-snap responsibilities, learning new terminology, um, and then, you know, on top of that, he played the Browns where their pass rush just dominated them and he just didn't have much of a chance. And uh, I think slowly throughout the season, you started seeing him get a little quicker, a little quicker. But it, that offensive line would just did not afford him too much time. So the margin of error for him was tiny. So if he was like a, a split second late on a read and he, he didn't quite make it there, he gets sacked. You know, that's how bad things were and you especially saw that in a Buccaneers game where I didn't think he was being you know that late he was a tick late on a few plays but you know he takes one misstep and he, he gets sacked uh, but you know and then against the Niners I think you really start to see his process speed up and you know he's hitting the last step of his uh, his drop and get rid of the ball and, and one thing that he really struggled with uh, throughout the season is reading the blitz but I thought he started seeing the blitz a lot better against the Niners and getting rid of the ball hot. And then you saw it all come together against the Steelers, who are a very blitz-heavy team. But I thought he did a good job of getting rid of the ball. And then um, just keeping his aggressive mindset through this whole thing has been pretty impressive, too. You know, he's he was a really aggressive quarterback at Ohio State. Uh, but, you know, even when he was getting pressured as much as he has, he hasn't dropped his eyes and just decided that he was going to throw the ball short. Uh, he's still big play hunting and that I think that's a really good sign for the steel uh, for the the Bears moving forward and you saw that uh pay off against the Steelers where you know he he was looking for those big plays and he hit those big plays when he needed to Ted as the Bears come out of this bye week and they play the Ravens this week you know one of the things I've been trying to figure out is how much better the offense could be the rest of the way I mean, feel free to chime in on, on what you think about Matt Nagy's offense system and, and all that. It's been it's been a rough go for a lot of his time here in Chicago, and uh, this, especially some of those games you just mentioned were not good at all. But I also wonder, you see the last couple weeks, and if he truly does have a good quarterback who's still going to be a rookie the rest of this year and go through some ups and downs, but if his rookie quarterback truly is making progress, I mean, what? how much of a difference can that make for this system that has really struggled to get going here in Chicago? Oh, it'll be huge. But I, I think the main thing is, can that offensive line improve and, you know, give Justin Fields a little bit of time because they can, you know, he's shown that he, he can hit those big plays and, um, you know, they're going to get Jenkins, their, their second round draft pick and left tackle back. Uh, so we'll see how he, he, you know, he integrates into the offense uh, eventually. Um, but, you know, I, I think with Matt Nagy's offense, you know, there's just a few things, just, you know, four or five plays a game where you're just kind of, you know, scratching your head. That's you know, it. like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like you could kind of make arguments for some of the plays, even though you don't yeah. agree with them. But there's some plays where you're just like, what, you know, why did you do that? Like, you know, 
running uh running a bootleg right a naked bootleg right into tj watt you know like you don't do that you don't run a naked bootleg into the defensive player of the year um year's lap and you know another thing is I don't understand why there isn't more designed runs and read options for Justin Fields because, you know, you're the offensive line is struggling and, you know, Justin Fields is still transitioning to the NFL and running those read option plays where you're taking advantage advantage of, you know, an elite athlete at the position just seems to make sense, but they haven't done it, but they did a lot of it against the Steelers. Um, and that's so one of the reasons why they had success, but they, all they have is like, a couple of zone replays that, you know, I, one of them I, I don't think is very well designed, but I think they could really, you know, increase, uh, be a lot more effective if they add in a lot more read options. And it, it just gives Justin Fields another tool uh, to take advantage of. It's using your personnel, right? Like to, to yeah. the best to their ability. So let me ask you about the personnel. You mentioned the offensive line. They got... 39-year-old Jason Peters, and to be honest, like sometimes I'm like, wow, like I can't believe this guy's still playing and still handling his own more often than that. Uh, so I'm just curious, the offensive line, the personnel there, the the tight ends, the the receivers, what do you make of the Bears' personnel and what they're actually doing around Justin Fields that helps Justin Fields, if you get my point? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, one thing they do well is they run the ball under center um, pretty well. I think Herbert's a really good, legitimate zone runner, and, and now they have David and Montgomery back, and we all know how good he is. So, so they run the ball under center really well. Uh, but I would like to see um, them, you know, just like what we talked about, just m- go into the shotgun and run a little bit more um, zone read. Um, and I, I, I don't understand why they want to go to Wildcat so much to run their option plays because Justin Fields is athletic enough to, you know, to run those type of plays. Um, but a- as far as the personnel, I, I think Mooney is a really good receiver and he's uh, kind of developed a really nice uh, chemistry with uh, Justin Fields and also Komet. You know, I, I see him dropping some passes, but at the same time, he, he is getting open, so there's some ability there, and if he could get a little more consistent catching the ball, I think those two pieces could really help uh, Fields, especially going downfield. Ted, where does Justin Fields at this point of the season rank among this, uh, what was a very high-profile, talented group of rookie quarterbacks that, that came in, and um, most of them are, are getting significant playing time this season? Yeah, uh, you know, right now, obviously, Mac Jones is playing the best of the rookie quarterbacks. But at the same time, we kind of expected that. You know, he was going to – but he he has exceeded expectations, to be fair. But um, at the same time, you know, we – most people thought he was the most pro-ready quarterback. And he went into by far the best situation as far as play calling, as far as uh, talent around him. So he, he's doing really well. And, you know, he's even played uh, better than expected. So – that's not a huge surprise. Um, it, I think there, how much the other rookie quarterbacks have struggled is a surprise. But when you look at the teams around them, you know it, it's pretty difficult. Like we, we talked about Justin Fields and his protection issues. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is in a really rough situation in Jacksonville. Guys are sh- struggling to create separation, to drop in passes over there, and you know it's a pretty questionable offensive system over there a- as well. Um, but you know I, I think Fields has. Uh, that Steelers game to me was the most impressive rookie performance so far because so much of it was him creating, um, you know, it, we talked about that aggressive mindset, throwing the ball downfield. Uh, so to me, that that was the, you know, the most impressive because it just showed what kind of upside he has if he gets it all together. Uh, you highlighted his 39-yarder down, uh, well, the, the slot fade a little bit to, to Allen Robinson. Um, any other throws? from that game that, that struck you? Is it down the seam to, to Jimmy Graham? Is it, you know, the scramble drill for the touchdown to down the money or even the 49ers? Like when, when he makes these, these plays and, and you're watching the film and you're grading this, like, like what are you making most note of in terms of his success? Well, I, I talked about the slot fade just because I thought it was just a very impressive play as far as his ability to process the defense. Um, the Steelers kind of showed a, a zone look at first and then he motioned his running back in to the backfield and they were still kind of showing zone and they were kind of communicating with each other. And then he saw some man indicators and then he saw a matchup that he liked Robinson on a safety. 
he checked into that slot fade. Uh, he, you know, I think he kind of sensed Minka Fitzpatrick, the free safety, moving up. So he, he knew there wouldn't be any deep help. And, you know, he, he threw a perfect ball for the fade. And it was just kind of a combination of him processing and then just kind of combining his ability to throw the ball deep. So I thought that was a really impressive play. And that game winner was, you know, like when you look at the TV copy, I thought he was throwing a, a crossing route because, you know, the way he threw that ball, the way Mooney was able to adjust to the ball, I thought it was a crossing route. But when you look at the All-22, it was a, you know, Mooney was running a fade and um, he had to throw him open. He had to throw a back shoulder pass, which is very hard to do. He had to do it while running left in an awkward position. So to be able to do that in that moment was just extremely impressive to me. And he's done that a few times the last few weeks, So especially moving to his left. He's got a couple touchdown yeah. throws uh, moving to his left. And um, I don't know. To me, that's just a, a, a pretty significant indicator that he's got what it takes to be a pretty special playmaker. When Because that's what you want these days from your quarterbacks. When things... The thing when things break down, the play after the play, to trust your quarterback to still get positive yards, and then sometimes you know even better than positive yards, a touchdown. Yeah, exactly, and that's you know that's why even though Mac Jones was pretty highly rated, oh well, at least you know I I gave him a first round grade, and uh, I, I think most people had him pretty highly rated, but they also had him rated as the fifth quarterback because in, in this draft class because. You know, he doesn't have that ability to create after the play. Uh, but we'll see how much his uh, his um, his mental acuity is able to kind of uh, make up for those shortcomings. But, you know, I think, you know, when you look at th- this quarterback class, you want that guy that can create after the uh, after things break down uh, that with that high upside, that Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert type of upside. That's what you're you're gambling on. Uh, so, you know, I think it's a, it's a definitely a good sign that you, you start seeing Justin Fields being able to make those plays and cut down on those negative plays. There's eight games left, and they are extremely important for the, the future of Matt Nagy. And we know Justin Fields, well, he isn't going anywhere any, anytime soon. So my, my question for you is, like, do you think Fields' development will change maybe Nagy's future in a sense? Like, what do you want to see from Fields over the next eight games that you think would change maybe the future of the Bears coaching staff? Like, what, what do you think would do that? Well, uh, you know, I... Layered question, ba- I know. <laughs> <laughs> just based on what I've seen, I just cannot see Nagy coming back. Um, but, you know, if this offense, you know, just starts... You start seeing those head-scratching play calls kind of get cut down. You see them adjusting to... Justin Fields' strengths a little bit more and, and finding a way to go downfield more, adding some more option plays that really take advantage of his his strengths. If you see all those things coming together and the offense just starts um, becoming a lot more efficient and, and rolling the last eight games, then you know I can see the, the possibility of bringing him back. But I, I just think based on his total body of work throughout these last you know, his his years in Chicago, it's hard for me to see him coming back. Hey, Ted, last thing I have for you, and I apologize if I'm putting you a little bit on the spot here, but what were your thoughts on Tevin Jenkins coming out? It's a big story this week here of him getting back uh, out there and trying to figure out what the Bears are actually going to do with him because Jason Peters has been playing really well at left tackle, but he's obviously not a a huge part of the future. I, I just, where do you feel like he slots in best? He also didn't play left tackle Tevin Jenkins that uh, pretty much at all a uh, little, just a little bit at Oklahoma state. Um, so uh, I, what would you do with him and, and how high are you on Tevin Jenkins as a player? You know, when I studied Tevin Jenkins, I, I, I loved his film. He was one of the, the, he was one of my favorite studies uh, in the draft season because he was so physical. Like he wanted to bury guys every single play, but I really liked him at right tackle. So I kind of have questions about how he will transition to a a left tackle. I think he's really athletic, but he does have some work from a technical standpoint um, when it comes to, to pass blocking. So, um, you know, when you're on the left side and you're on the quarterback's blind side, that's, um, your, your development b- better speed up pretty quickly. So uh, with him missing all that time, uh, I just don't know, you know, how much work he's gotten, or he has he gotten enough work to where he can 
make that transition to left tackle and uh, replace Jason Peters. So, um, you know, you guys know the Bears personnel better than me. I mean, do you think that, you know, it'd be helpful if he played right, uh, right tackle instead of left tackle this season? Well, well, that, well, part of the problem yeah. is they have an, an, the other rookie, Larry Borum Jr. out of Missouri, uh-huh. uh, who is a fifth round pick. Who's been, I mean, he's only it's a small sample size. He's only been out there for a couple of games, but he's played pretty well at right tackle. Um, and I know some have speculated and wondered if maybe long term it actually makes more sense to play Larry Borum at left tackle and Tevin Jenkins at right tackle. But I don't know how much you want to mess with that right now in the middle of the season. Yeah, for sure. And, and there's also the you know the option of playing him at guard and letting him develop there, and then moving him back to tackle in the off season. You know that's uh, that's happened with some tackles in the past, and they had success doing that. The Raiders are doing that with Alex Leatherwood right now because he really struggled at, at right tackle. Um, but I mean, you know, Jenkins is a talented off the lineman, and I think you got to find a way to get him on the field somehow but it, at the same time it's kind of hard to say oh just go replace jason peters right now you know <laughs> you know in an ideal world adam and i have talked about this the bears have drafted their franchise quarterback and maybe a couple starting tackles but we know things don't always work out that way for the chicago bears <laughs> you know just from <laughs> following their history but i mean it looks like they have their, their quarterback that's uh yeah you know, you know that, what that's, that's, that's really piece. all that matters you know yeah that's really all that matters. Hey, Ted, we really appreciate the time today. Uh, thank you so much. And again, our listeners, make sure you're following him on Twitter at FB underscore film analysis. You can read his breakdowns on The Athletic. And he's also part of State of the Nation podcast. So check that out as well. Ted Nguyen, thanks so much. No problem. Thanks for having me on. When the moment is right, you need to be ready. That's Roman ready. Go to GetRoman.com slash Adam now to speak to U.S. licensed healthcare professional to talk about erectile dysfunction and get $15 off your first month of treatment. It is more common than most people think. In fact, 52% of men between the ages of 40 and 70 will experience some form of ED. Roman's system is completely confidential and totally discreet. No big logos or labels on packages. With Roman, you get free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. A U.S. Licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships to you free with two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, convenient, and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Adam to complete an online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving your home. Complete an online visit today to connect with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional and take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash Adam today. If you prescribe, get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this fall. Roman ready. This episode is brought to you by Four Sigmatic, a wellness company that is well known for its delicious mushroom coffee. You heard me talking about this before. Four Sigmatic's mushroom coffee is real, organic, fair trade, single origin Arabica coffee with lion's mane mushroom for productivity and chaga mushroom for immune support. I need some right now, to be honest with you. I go to this when I need that extra boost of focus so I can get things done. And it's just better than regular coffee because it's amazing. You feel that uptick in productivity every time you drink it, and it helps you focus. It's easy on your gut, too. doesn't leave you with that awful, jittery feeling or midday crash. All Four Sigmatic products are organic, vegan, and gluten-free. Plus, every single batch is third-party lab-tested to ensure its purity and safety so you know you're getting the highest quality coffee and mushrooms possible. They have over 20 thousand five-star reviews and best of all four sigmatic backs their products with a 100 money back guarantee love every sip or get your money back and no this coffee does not taste like mushrooms it tastes just like the coffee you love it brews dark nutty and tastes incredible and we've worked out an exclusive offer with four sigmatic on their best-selling mushroom coffee but this is just for hogan john's listeners get up to 40 percent off 
and free shipping on Mushroom Coffee bundles. To claim this deal, you must go to foursigmatic.com slash Adam. Again, this offer is only for Hogan John's listeners. It is not available on the regular website. You'll save up to 40% off and get free shipping. So go right now to foursigmatic.com. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com slash Adam and fuel your productivity and creativity with some delicious mushroom coffee. We're all trying to eat better, but when things are busy, like during football season, that could be hard, especially breakfast. You're trying to get the kids out of the house. You got all kinds of things going on. Everything, Everybody's in a rush, but healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring or hard to do. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. There's only 140 calories a serving. Keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb, all of that stuff. And you build your own box. Very easy to do. You got amazing flavors to choose from. Cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. And as I've been telling you, cookies and cream and maple waffle, they're so good. They're so popular. They are now back permanently so go to magicspoon.com slash adam to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today be sure to use our promo code adam at checkout to save five dollars off your order magic spoon is so confident in their product it's back with a 100 happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked remember to get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash adam Use the promo code ADAM to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Hey, you've probably heard of Masterclass, but what exactly is it? With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, at your own pace. A few examples. You can learn how to play poker from Phil Ivey. You can learn how to cook with Gordon Ramsay. Or you can even learn some basketball skills from Steph Curry. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. I've been checking out a couple of these classes. You may know this already, but I tend to dabble in the ukulele a little bit in the offseason. And there's a ukulele class on there. And I was blown away by some of the details and things I never really thought of or done because I've never really had a professional class that I've taken to play ukulele on there, but it's right there on master class and just little things like that. If you've ever wanted to try it, or if you're already doing something, you want to get better at it, you just check out masterclass.com. This holiday, you can give one annual membership and get one free just by going to masterclass.com slash first down today. That's masterclass.com slash first down. Again, give one annual membership, get one free at masterclass.com slash first down. Terms apply. Well, you heard it right there. Ted thinks the Bears have their quarterback. You know what? I, 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 I want to believe it. There are signs that everyone should believe it, but I don't know. And I'm like, you know what I'm talking about? Like it's, we've been down this road before, but I, I, I've we not have not felt been this. down this road with a quarterback that has felt this right. You know, that, that, that's the feelings are just different. It does feel that right. Yeah. Like I'm extremely optimistic about this, even as as positive as I was about Mr. Trubisky. Does it compare how how positive I feel about Justin Fields? And, and I'll even take it this far. You know, you see him in the in the bye week going out there, and I know it's promotional stuff, and he's probably getting paid for it. With um, but he's doing all these interviews with Dunkin' Donuts, but raising money for Lurie Children's Hospital. Like I always think about all the stuff Anthony Rizzo did the entire time he was here, uh, and and still doing with, with Lurie Children's Hospital, even though he's not here. And like it just already feels like. Justin Fields is, is he already the biggest athlete in Chicago? Yeah. I mean, Kane's still around, but I don't know, Blackhawks, right? Seems like everything, the Black Hawks, Black but, Hawks the, but, but the Blackhawks have faded, you know? They, they haven't won in a while, and then you have the, I mean, yeah, you know, the, the, the awfulness. But like, yeah, I put Tim Anderson in the conversation, no, Zach I, Levine. I, no, but it's a different the, level the with the starting Bears. starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Yeah. It's the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears, and you have a 
one that like I want to believe in. Like, but usually people yeah, hate yeah. the starting quarterback of the Chicago Bears. They don't right now. Yeah, well, there's some people. There are still some people in the comment section of the Athletic who still think that Andy Dalton should be playing right now. Like that, that's just oh, complete man. insanity. But that's look at the comments. The past few stories. Like there are people who believe that Andy Dalton like would win games for the Bears at this point. I didn't know Matt Nagy left comments on the Athletic. <laughs> He does. It's a joke. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I think Matt's perfectly happy right now with probably how this is. He should be. Work. But that's, you know, that except for the fact that they're on a four-game losing streak. For a team on a four-game losing streak in the bye week, that's usually like you don't feel good about anything. And yet, I feel like this was the most optimistic bye week the Bears have had in years. Yeah. Well, a young quarterback yeah. making 39-year-old, 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 throwing 39-year-old, 39-year-old. Got Jason Peters still in my mind. Yes. Throwing 39 yard fades to Allen Robinson. Like everything Ted just said. Like it's, he's an electric player, man. It's easy to see. Like he has as many completions over 20 yards this season as Mitch Trubisky had in the entirety of last season. And I know Mitch didn't play every single game, but that says something. Like this is a different quarterback. Yeah. A lot different. Um, Now, the one thing people were still mad about throughout the bye week, and I think continue to be the officiating in Pittsburgh, which we kind of have to, you know, move on, but also tie up the loose ends on this because there was a report um, from Tom Pelissero and Ian Rappaport on Sunday, you know, essentially admitting that the league came back and admitted that there were three bad calls, and there were significant bad calls. Now, they're still standing behind the taunting, which I will say, based on the stupid rule, <laughs> that doesn't I mean, include the word posture. Right. I, I, I still have a problem, and I wrote this last week. If you want to go back and look at it, like uh, they don't define taunting in the rule book, which is really annoying. I don't know how you can't do that in the actual rule book. Posturing is not in there. Posturing is in the rule book thirteen times. In no situation is it in there to describe taunting. I but love that's, how you took the time to. Oh, by that, the way, but, yeah. it's not that hard. You just you just go into know, PDF you, and you but, hit but, control. But you, but you went to it, you know. Well, but like I, a lot of I, was, I wasn't even going to spend the time. <laughs> no, some of our readers were like, "You really read the whole?" Ro-? No, <laughs> I did not. I, I, I hit control F and I wrote the word in, um, in a couple different variations just to make sure. You know, so the three bad calls were they're standing behind the taunting, whatever. That's they just that's the bigger conversation about the rule. So they they did admit that the call on James Daniels was horrible. Okay, that took a touchdown off the board. That's a big deal. Um, they admitted that two plays later, it was a it should have been roughing the passer on Justin Fields, and then they admitted, which was the thing that I didn't even notice. And you were the one that pointed out. I think the next day, there were like three Steelers offsides on the the 65-yard field goal, which, I, you know, whatever. I, I, they move it up five yards. I don't think he's making it from 60 either, but maybe they rethink it's still them. another opportunity. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, but, it's, it's, but, you know what, yeah. why that's so frustrating, actually? Because they kept calling offsides on the Bears. That's right. That's it. That's it. Like, over and over and over again. And that's a lot of them were on the Bears for lining up offsides. Don't do it. But if the other team's going to do it, and you keep calling it on the Bears, then you got to call it on them, too. Call it both ways. And there was one time they called it on Roquan Smith, and he wasn't offsides. He was just kind of moving towards the line of scrimmage, but he wasn't actually in the neutral zone. So, I don't know. It was an awful game by the officials. Mm-hmm. Matt Nagy said he talked to the league about it. I'm sure that conversation went well. Of course, he wasn't going to reveal what was said. Uh, Nagy doesn't reveal much anymore, but I imagine that was... Um, well, somebody very... revealed what was said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, somebody did. Somebody, I mean, it got out, which, good. I wonder, actually, if the Lee wanted it out, too. I don't know. Like, we messed up? Tony messed up? It was up. so bad that at some point, you have to admit when you screwed up, right? Yeah. They're never going to publicly throw the officials under the bus. But. Not an easy job, but be better. Be fair. Well, it's not an easy job, which is why it's okay you have a couple calls wrong a game. But that many? Yeah. Well, then you add the 
the debatable taunting penalty on top of it in that moment of the game, which is yeah. <laughs> not good. Um, all right. Well, just had to tie all that up. Moving on, though. It's a new week. We're on to the Ravens. On to the Ravens. Should be a... Hey, look, if nothing else, it's a great quarterback matchup between Lamar yeah. Jackson and The Justin Ravens' Fields. defense is not that good. We'll get into it on Thursday more, but yes. it's not that good. Yeah, we have a lot to preview, a lot to break down in this game. Um, but, I I mean, whatever happens win-loss-wise, I think that it is reasonable to expect Justin Fields to continue to take step forward, a step forward against the Ravens. Now, there's yep. always going to be bad weeks. He's still a rookie, but um, I think from that standpoint, the matchup looks pretty good. That's an important reminder, though, because even veteran quarterbacks have bad weeks. Tom mm-hmm. Brady, Matthew Stafford. Stafford was terrible yesterday. Baker Mayfield every other week. You know, like, guys with experience have bad weeks. Patrick Mahomes for the longest period of time. At least felt that way, right? Like, You know what, though? As good as that game was, and it was like a historically good game the other night, he had a couple misses that I was like, wait a minute, he hits those usually. There was one in the end zone? No, through the end zone, where the guy's yeah. open in the end zone. Yeah, it was wide open. You know, there was still a few plays there that it, and then part of that's like you're holding him to the Patrick Mahomes bar, which is really, really high, but you're still going, hey, wait a minute, what's wrong there? Yeah, he's had a different season. Definitely. Especially by his standard. All right, well, we'll we will be back Thursday. Uh, as always, we got another noon game back to uh, regularly scheduled football, at least for a little bit, because then we turn around and we got the Thanksgiving game next week. Um, but a big opportunity for the Bears. You know, I think pretty much everyone's writing off their season, but... If you can steal a game against the Ravens, and boy, this has been a weird year in the NFL. Every week, it's so unpredictable what's happening. So if you can steal a game against the Ravens, then all of a sudden you're facing the Lions a few days later on Thanksgiving. Hey, it's just a big opportunity this week. Yeah, As bad as things are going. One final thought on this. The Bears are technically still in the hunt. (laughs) Did you see that graphic? Like every single team in the NFC is in the hunt, but one, the winless Lions. That being said, after the Monday night football game last night, they put up the playoff probabilities, and the Bears were not on the list in the NFC. Yeah, they have like they a, were below the Falcons. I, I haven't checked it today on Tuesday, but um, I think Football Outsiders had them like a, at a one point nine percent chance. Yeah, like heading into Week Ten, so it's not good. Makes for a fun graphic to share on Twitter, though. Right. But, yeah, and I'm not even talking about playoffs. I'm just talking about the possibility of being able to get back-to-back wins. Which, if you can win a couple games while your quarterback's getting better, that helps. And you don't have a first-round pick, so you don't have to hear any of that nonsense this fall or going into the winter about, like, oh, tanking for whatever. No. Doesn't, doesn't matter. You tank, tank for Tua. Tank, tank for, for the Tua. Giants. That worked, that worked out Yeah, well. how'd that work out? Tank for Tua. <laughs> Tank for the Giants. The Giants play the Bears the second to last week. That'll be an interesting matchup for the Giants' perspective. Yeah. They'll find out who's really tanking. <laughs> but either way, they lose and they win. Yeah. Because they'll have their own pick, too. Let's we'll see which one's more valuable. Well, that's way down the road. All right, we're out of here. Follow us on Twitter at Adam Hogue, at Adam Johns. Our producer is Kent Garrison. Always does a great job. Thanks to Ted Nguyen for jumping on today given his insights on Justin Fields and the Bears offense. Make sure you check out those sweatshirts. They're for sale. We got uh, something else in store here coming really quick, too. I think it's coming down the line. So um, the sweatshirts are available. Check them out, obviousshirts.com. Go get them now. We appreciate everybody who sent us their screenshots and their orders. They're coming in, and everything helps benefit the 22Q Family Foundation this month. So keep those coming in. Really, really deeply appreciate that. Thank you so much. We will talk to you on Thursday. See ya. Hoag. 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 Hoag.